Hi, I'm Rachel Shelton. I'm a faculty member at Columbia School of Public Health, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about uh, thinking how we can measure sustainability in a rigorous way. So um, following up on our definitions and conceptualizations of sustainability, again, some of the critical components of sustainability include kind of the continuation of program components, the extent to which the core elements are still being delivered, the continuation of health benefits and outcomes, and the continued presence of capacity building and community level partnerships. Um, and the definition of that really reflects this, the one from Shire and Deering from AGPH in 2011. And when we look at common indicators of sustainability as an outcome, um, Marianne Shire and Jim Deering have put forth a range of options. And again, the, the most common ones are really the ones that reflect the indicators that we just discussed. So again, do the health benefits or outcomes continue? So do we see, do they, are they maintained? Do they remain level? Are they improved upon over time? Or do they decrease? Um, are the core components of the original intervention, do they continue? So if the intervention has six core components or are all core components continue to be delivered? If not, uh, which ones are continued, which ones are not, and why? What adaptations were made? This is really critical information that often is not captured, but can really help inform um, practice and our evolving evidence base around sustainability and adaptation. Um, and then a third important indicator is whether or not community level partnerships or coalitions are maintained. So are there indicators of capacity building? Are there coalitions still in place? Are there academic partnerships? Are there trainings that had to be critical that, that are still in place? So again, any of those indicators of capacity building that would be important, are they maintained? And again, Often it's not um, just one sustainability indicator. It's recommended actually that ideally you would think about measuring multiple um, to, capture, to capture multiple dimensions of sustainability. And it would be important to work with stakeholders to determine which ones are most important if you have to prioritize them. And again, in thinking about who this is measured among, you know, there's a variety of stakeholders. So it may be at the patient level that make, may make sense. It may make sense as well at the provider or interventionist level, at the organizational level in terms of the clinic manager or the teacher or the school principal, um, or even at a, at a higher level. Um, so again, thinking about the range of stakeholders that you would want to collect this among. And also how you're going to think about measuring this. So again, often we, um, because of issues around feasibility or cost or access, we may need to um, rely more on self-report measures, which have some limitations in terms of social desirability bias. Um, but when possible, we can think about triangulation and whether or not we can also support that with more objective measures like fidelity assessments in terms of the continued delivery of the intervention or adaptation checklists. Um, maybe there's a, the opportunity to look at um, health behavior change or outcomes through existing administrative databases. So again, any opportunities to also work with existing data or to have more objective um, data collection opportunities is also um, suggested. And Marianne Shire and Jim Deering also talk about a couple other ways you can think about measurement of sustainability as an outcome. So again, one is institutionalization, whether new organizational practices, procedures, and policies are maintained. And again, there in general, there's been a move kind of away from thinking about sustainability as this root, routinized um, kind of sustainability as in-game that would need to be kind of maintained in a certain way in order for it to kind of count. Um, and I think, again, given the dynamic nature of sustainability, um, there's been less emphasis on that. But there is a whole set of measures that Yin and others have developed. And I think in some contexts, this may make sense. Um, and I've seen this used in particular in school-related um, contexts. Um, and there's also the option to look at whether attention to the issue or problem is sustained. So maybe that's at the community level. Um, and then whether or not any program diffusion has happened to other sites. So has it sustained and then as a result has been replicated more broadly or disseminated more broadly. So again, there's a range of options in terms of measuring sustainability as an outcome. And again, when we look at what's been kind of done in the literature, Shannon Wilsey Sturman did a great review of 125 studies on of sustainability in 2012. And she found that um, 
About almost half of the studies measured continued delivery of program components, so many did not, and they just looked at yes or no, did, did the program continue. Only 22% reported continued um, information about the delivery of, or uh, the impact on health behaviors or outcomes, and fewer than half of the programs continued at high levels of fidelity. So even if a program was originally implemented with full fidelity or you know, fully implemented, in most cases, um, fewer than half of those continued in that original form, and most were um, really reflected partial sustainability. But again, there was very little information about the types of adaptations that were made, which components were continued or discontinued, why and what adaptations were made, and the health impact of partially sustained programs. And, you know, David Chambers, um, Shannon Wilsey-Sturman, and a lot of others, um, Moore and colleagues have, and Hill and colleagues have done some great work thinking about taxonomies and classifications of adaptations. So this is a huge emerging area that I think is um, really interesting and important in implementation science. But again, the, the key message here is I think capturing and understanding and documenting adaptations are critical to understanding sustainability.